Welcome on everyone <coughs> again. <coughs> it's been away a couple of weeks from a put something up. Uh, I was looking through the, the Wood Turner magazine and I came across this wee Orient box style thing that uh, Jimmy Clues had done and I think George O'Brien done it first and he Jimmy uh, made the the lid for it. So it's quite a old one. I was going back through back issues of the magazine to see, get some uh, projects to do, and uh, I came up with this one. So I'll just show you that. Okay. So I'm going to try to recreate this. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't give me any sizes uh, for the base, and by the looks of it, uh, what Jimmy's done is uh, take a size off his base and then trace the shape out onto a block here and go from there. So that's what we're doing today. Today, today. Uh, I've been making other things. I've been quite busy over the last last weekend was our big day weekend out at uh, Shane's Castle, and uh, that's a demonstration demonstration for two days. I was racked, and uh, it turned out a good weekend, even though the weather was bad. But uh, we were on our marquee, and uh, we were nice and dry, so. It didn't really matter. Uh, one of the members of the club asked me would I make him one of these, a long work chuck. Have you see, seen before? I have a big one. It fits my lathe. This is for his lathe. And all he had to do was buy the, the hardware. And uh, I got the bit of uh, MDF and... Uh, Right or the right. Uh, there's plenty of plans on YouTube. Just put on Longworth Chuck, and they're quite simple to follow. And uh, it saves you a lot of money. Uh, the one in the shop, that size, I think it was 160, 170 pounds for that size. And all he paid for was the uh, the wee buttons, which were 20 quid. Uh, I had to get longer screws. I, they, were there, they were a fiver. He will have to buy his own faceplate ring. Uh, so he probably has one of those. So for sake of 25 quid, maybe say 40 if he's to buy a new uh, faceplate ring. 40 quid's a lot cheaper than 160 or 170 quid. Let me tell you, especially when, when you're you're retired and you're you're not uh, bringing in money. So, uh, I'm just going to have a wee play around with this. Uh, I've done some Let's work. On. So. I'll just use the tail stock to get me that center here and we'll put glue in uh, the hot melt glue on this and then just bring the tail stock up to hold it while it cures and that should be my center. Uh, yeah that looks a lot better there looking at that. I don't like things uh, <laughs> between centers because you're lying on, okay, you've measured it and centered, okay. But when you put your, the points of the live center going and your uh, stab center, the grain of the wood, uh, it doesn't always go the way you want it. So it'll go off to one side and that's why it's probably throwing it off. I have a nice flat surface for this to sit against and bringing the tail stock up will push that nice and tight onto it. So 
in theory that should be nice and flat as it spins and I'd be able to get a, a tenon cut in this so I will need a tenon cut on both sides because uh, we'll be taking the wee dish out of it and then turn it around and uh, doing the bottom but we're going to be doing the bottom first so there's this thing heating up we'll remove the tailstock Remove that live center. Oh, we need to get pointed with that there on the elbow. Okay, so we want to get a spigot or for the purpose of this, the way uh, he has done it on the drawing, the spigot will be protruding because you're going to be taking timber away from below it, so we'll actually have a spigot on it another recess as I'm doing here this is a recess at the minute so best to check it before you go any further and then <clears throat> when you go to turn it around you find out that your uh, spigot's too small or too big uh, you want to have your chuck jaws <coughs> gripping this spigot or tannin uh, the thing about jaws if you open them too much they're only grabbing on the outside pieces of the the jaws themselves. If you keep your jaws to within about four millimeters of opening, you're getting the whole circumference of the the jaws gripping around the whole nice round piece. Ah, uh, right. Whatever width your the bowl is underneath the walls, etc. This point here. You must have, you must make it the same on the, the top side, or it won't look right. So, I'm just marking that. What's, that's where they had the pencil line, so I'm just going to come in a wee bit more here. I take a wee bit off that. Uh, I think it's too wide. Hopefully we look at that and see. Right, that's taking a good bit off that. I'm just going to go down with a parting tool here and get me. So I've now confirmed the width of the underneath bit. Okay, so 
Oh. Start. Right, I can see the problems the other way. I don't, I think this uh, base bit was a bit thicker than I have. Because uh, I'm not getting the shape. It's actually the the plywood gives up before the glue gives up, so there's still a bit of life in that one. Just need to be tidy up on the back of it, and that'll do again. Uh, so I don't need those. Get rid of those. Just turn the rest of that away. Okay, so that's the inside of it. Inside wall. I can always widen that, you see, if I make it too wide and then I can't add it back, so uh, yeah, I could probably come out a wee bit more than that, but for now I'm going to let it be. I'm just going to tidy up the, the side. The edge of my underneath the bowl, the bottom of the bowl is there starts there so I can afford to take a nor wee bit out of this uh, but I want to get this piece here where it transforms into the rest of the piece and Sharpen that gouge a wee minute. Uh, just want to see what that's like. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to turn it around and work from the back. Uh, so you can see it's getting there, but it's a bit further to go. I'm in expansion mode here on the chuck, so 
I have to be very careful. Here. Right. There's, there's a wee bit of a lump there and there. So it needs, this needs just a, a wee tickle. To take that right. Sitting below the wings, so that should probably be okay. Now the thing is to try and sand this and try to get. Mhm. Mm it's going to require a lot of sanding in places like here. For some reason, there's a wee bit of flex in it. Now. Okay. Uh, it needs a wee bit of a trim here. There's a bit of a gouge mark on there uh, to take that out. Uh, not sand out, uh, but there we are. Uh, it's called Magic of the Orient. Uh, it doesn't look magic from the Orient, from my perspective. <laughs> it looks, looks a bit rough and ratty at the minute, in it. And uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll see you later. Okay. Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, day two of our project. This get <coughs> a good bit of sanding. Uh, I'm just going to hit it now with 600 here. Uh, it's had right up to 400 and it's had a coat of uh, sanding sealer. That's what it has. So I'm just going to knock it back. Take any wee bits. Let's raise the green. So we'll use the quarter inch spindle gauge and we'll get the lathe up the speed. That's where I like to, to be. I'm going to take an hour, we couple of cuts off this to tidy it up. Stop and have an RV look at this.
just want to be careful when you're doing stuff like that there. I'm all right. <laughs> Pull my hand away quick enough. Or just got a wee, a wee wrap on the, the knuckles there. So I'm not, not going to try that again. I'll just concentrate on the inside bit. And uh, the rest will be done <coughs> by hand using uh, the polishing map. Just give the inside a wee touch of wax. That's all that needs. So you want to be gentle here, because uh, take it easy. It's uh, just being held by little on this. You know what? Just trying to put a bit, a bit more on this cannon. Just see if I can get a grab on it to finish the outside again. Uh, I should have really brought the tail stock up there. Uh, so take most of that away, but you learn from your mistakes. Right. There's very little to grab here, so I'm hoping I'll get some sort of a hole on it. And that seems firm enough. Right. There's our me mark there. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just widen that a wee bit. Did me get disappear? Okay. Let's try again and take the rest of this food off without doing too much more damage to it. Oh, there are a couple of wee marks out. There's one here, and there's that one there. So we're going to take a wee bit off this, and the same off the other side, and whatever we take off there, we'll have to take off on the other side as well. So, that's that.
So we'll carry on with this. I'm just going to stick a drop of the glue on this. And bring the tail stack up. Wind it in. Okay. So this is the top of our piece with the, the shape drawn on it. Uh, this up. There's a wee bit to come off there, just here. You can see that on camera, yeah. You just about, uh, just pencil it back in again. It's sort of rubbed off. So, and that wee bit goes through there. And there's there. Something like that, the lines following. So I need to, I need to get a good cut in this. Oh, you Jeff Duke at that. Right, okay. Got a bit of tar right there and there. Let's see if we can get an R. Cut at this. Just change cameras and let you see this, guys. Uh, you can see it's more or less, it's not far away from the shape I want, which is a good thing. So I'm happy enough with that. We just need to reduce this a wee bit so that it fits in to our recess here. So we'll take a wee bit more off the side of this get some 80 grit in it and I just want to tidy up these ends here
Okay guys, that's uh, another project finished. Uh, we 
she quite thin. Just a wee winged box. Not the <coughs> not the look I was going for, but uh, where's the picture? What's the picture? But maybe next time uh, with a deeper bit of wood, I'll get that shape. We've got a I've got a shape on it, and uh, it looks okay. I'm happy enough with it. Uh, it's one of those things, if you haven't... I did drop it though. <coughs> I was just saying, what was I saying? Uh, it's one of those things. Until you uh, try a piece, you don't know what way it's going to work out. Uh, I'm trying to copy that piece, uh, which is a nice piece in its own, but uh, I didn't get anywhere near it uh, as such. But it's a nice wee project, and. Uh, It is what it is. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I will catch you later. Uh, where am I? Oh, there we are, Paul. As I said, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll get an RE project up soon, and uh, hopefully it'll be a bit more. Uh, the RE project I was going to do was. Where the rest of us? It came from the same book, and it's this wee piece. Bit of all center work, uh, bit of uh, texturing around the outside, uh, mirror in the background, a wee tea light holder thingy, cone shape in the middle. And uh, yeah, it looks, and again, it doesn't give you any sizes, it just shows you the process that you want to to uh, make the piece. But we shall, I can't see anything going wrong with this one because it's more or less a, a flat piece of timber round. So let's see what it's like. Okay guys, bye for now, bye.